Hi everyone, it's Savannah and welcome back to The Hungry Ladybug. And today is very exciting because Cameo is here! <laughs> Hello everyone. So if you didn't know, The Hungry Ladybug is a project that we decided to start in order to commemorate our grandmother. And we're working our way through her recipe book and documenting it here and on our blog, which I will link down below. And today we're starting a very exciting series called The 12 Dishes of Ukrainian Christmas. Now normally all of these dishes would be made for one big meal on Christmas Eve. And yeah, we're probably going to be making a lot of these dishes again or either like freezing them and using them on the day. But for this series we've decided to post one vlog uh, per recipe starting on the 13th leading up to the 24th. So the first recipe we're going to be making is the borscht. What was I saying? What is borscht? What is borscht? So borscht is a very common Ukrainian soup, which is made from beets and other vegetables, with dill as the primary seasoning. Now, dill is the primary seasoning. It's amazing. It's really pretty. Um, it's one of my absolute favorites, and we always had it growing up. And it's a staple for Christmas dinner. And there are a lot of different varieties of borscht all around the world. It's a, quite a a common soup, um, but we're going to be making our grandma's version. So I hope you enjoy watching us make some borscht today. All right, so the recipe in our grandmother's cookbook is for summer borscht, and uh, you might notice that there is a spelling discrepancy between how we're spelling it and how our grandmother is spelling it. Um, and to be honest, she's very inconsistent in her recipe book with spelling. I think that just because when these words were being anglicized, there were lots of different varieties, and it's a, quite an interesting uh, phenomenon, I think. So her recipe is for summer borscht, and that means that it includes a lot of vegetables in it that you wouldn't have in other months just because she had an amazing vegetable garden on her farm that she grew and so she want to use up all of these delicious vegetables that she was making so it has things like string beans in it, shelled peas, and broad beans however the most common borscht that she would make and the one that we had in her kitchen all the time was more of a winter borscht so it would be very pared back and we're making a borscht with just beets, potatoes, onions, and dill. Also, we should add that this is a very large quantity. It has eight cups of water and a lot of vegetables. We are making a very small portion of this for two people because we are working with a very small pot. So keep that in mind. If you want to make a larger portion, you'll want to double the recipe or triple it if you're going to be making it for, say, four people. <laughs> like it's like swimming. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I feel like the potato chunk should be slightly smaller than the beet chunks. Just so that the beets take center stage. The beets must be the prima ballerina of the borscht. I love beets a lot. They smell really earthy. I think they're one of the prettier vegetables, along with um, radishes. It's kind of supposed to be a bit I don't know what minced means, and I don't know what bigger chunks mean. You don't know what minced means? I don't know what, no, I don't. Like very finely chopped? Okay. Uh, 
um, you can use dried dill as well in this. Um, but keep in mind that it tends to be kind of more powerful than fresh dill. So you might want to adjust to taste. Actually, the scent of dill is the scent that most reminds me of Grandma. I think mine is fried. Butter? Butter frying. <laughs> That's like the smell of Ukrainian food is butter and onions. Now to chop the dill, you can just really scrunch it into the tiniest ball possible. Just go for it. Savannah so knows this already, but I'm getting her a a larger <laughs> saucepan. <laughs> I'm getting, getting a proper soup pot. So yeah, with the borscht, you kind of have two options regarding the vinegar because it is a very sweet soup because beets have so much sugar in them naturally, but the vinegar really cuts some of that. So if you're like us, you can add lots of vinegar or if you don't really like sour things as much, then you can just go the minimal route. And our grandma um, never used vegetable stock in her her borscht, or I'm not really sure what she... She just used water, yeah. So, um, because the beets are really flavorful and make really nice broth on their own, so it, this just has salt as a, as a seasoning, um, plus the dill, obviously, and then the vinegar. So that makes it really nice broth on its own. Alright, so now we're just going to throw it all into the pot, or what we can fit into the pot, because as you can see this is very tiny. Um, Unlike with other soups, we're not softening the onions first. Um, we're just putting it in, adding the water and letting it boil for what, about an hour. Basically, you want to um, keep an eye on it and just test to see if the beets are soft because they'll be the last thing to cook. The, the potatoes and the onions will be cooked before the beets. So we've filled this up with enough water to basically cover the beets, and this is probably far too full and it's probably going to boil over. So we seasoned it with some salt. I've just added a, a pinch right now and then I'll add more to taste later. I always oversalt things. It is my greatest flaw. Let's talk about borscht, I guess. It's a uh, simmering on the stove. So yeah, we thought we'd just sit down and have a little chat with our coffee. Um, last year we did twelve dishes on on one in one day, and it was it was very hard. <laughs> the pierogies are particularly difficult because we usually do three different kinds, and we're going to be doing that for our video here. And when we did twelve dishes last year, we only had five people. <laughs> at the dinner, so it was way too much food for five people. It was kind of funny because it was just us and our mom and then our dad and then our kind of uncle and they're not really Ukrainian, but our, our mom is, but our, our dad and our uncle are not really Ukrainian. Well, our uncle's wife. But yeah, that's what I was going to say. She was, she was really, 
very much Ukrainian. <laughs> also, they they don't like cabbage. So, yeah, neither of them like cabbage, but it's kind of like at a certain point. I mean, if you're the one making all of the food, then, I mean, it should be kind of up to you what that food is going to be. I mean, taking into account, like, dietary concerns. <laughs> Just serve yourself. <laughs> Sauce on borscht. Sauce on borscht. I like it. Um, I like beets. A lot. It's the first course of the Ukrainian Christmas dinner. Of course, the first thing that you eat is the kutya, the wheat. What am I trying to say? Like, you know when you, like, Sit down to it's like an appetizer. <laughs> the borscht. Right? The borscht is kind of like an appetizer course. Yeah, and the wheat is like you have to have a spoonful of that first for good luck. But yeah. And I was telling her she didn't know that you would actually it's meant to be kind of thick and sticky and you're supposed to take a spoon and, and throw the kutya, not the Oh yeah, not the borscht. <laughs> you do not want to throw borscht at your ceiling. Don't be throwing beets around your house. Anyway. I'm a big fan of borscht. It's probably my favorite soup actually. Um, did I ever tell you how Sean won me over by making me borscht while we were court? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> it had lots of sauerkraut in it. It was really good. So that was a very effective... Yeah, anything with sauerkraut. <laughs> I really like and pickled things. Sauerkraut, pickled, anything. Fermented Cucumbers. and pickled. It's kind of the same thing. But We're actually going to be doing pickle video, so look forward yeah. to <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to add a bit more salt now that the soup is cooked. We've just tested to see if it's done by stabbing a piece of beet and seeing if a fork goes in. And you want it to be not still crunchy, but um, just firm so it has a bit of a bite to it still. And as I said before, the potatoes are already uh, cooked. So I'll just add a bit more salt. So I didn't add very much at the beginning. Why not? Um, and then I'll give that a bit of a stir and we'll add the, the vinegar. Um, so I'm going to add maybe two capfuls. This is quite a strong vinegar it's kind of for pickling and then I'll test it yeah so that was pretty good um, just a good amount of vinegar if you don't want to overdo it maybe just start with one capful and test it to see if you like what if you like it and then you can add more if you want You excited for the borscht? I'm so hungry. Okay. Are you excited? We are so excited. Uh, it's been such a long time since I had borscht. Probably like two weeks. <laughs> no, how I survived this long. It really is the prettiest soup of all time. I would eat it just for the color, it's just like jewel toned. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Mm -hmm. And um, we added sweet cream to ours, but our grandma would typically add sour cream, or I guess sour it just cream. depends on your preference. I definitely prefer sour cream, but we forgot to. It's been raining. We didn't want to go outside because we're lazy. So we'll definitely be making this again <laughs> on the 24th for our Christmas dinner. Sorry, I'm just like so into the borscht. Yeah, so thanks everyone for watching. We hope you enjoyed this and maybe you'll make some borscht yourself. Yeah, so if you liked this video, uh, please subscribe. And look forward to more vlogs soon for the 12 days of Ukrainian Christmas.
Okay, I think that's good. And today we have a very special guest. <laughs> Should we acknowledge that we're like twins or... I mean, they got it. They got it, I think. Okay. <laughs> inordinate amount of... Is that a word? Inordinate? In inordinate? Inordinate? Int? No, inordinate. Inordinate amount of food. Oh, I'm doubting myself. 